Okay, so you get those two screws out and then take a flat head and just ever so gently. Uh, there's an area in between here. You can see where I've got the flat head there. Just start to pry it down really easy. Uh, work your way back and forth. This fuel bowl has a rubber o-ring that goes all the way around it. <clears throat> and if it hasn't been apart in a long time or ever, it's going to be stuck pretty good and you're going to wind up splashing fuel all over when it finally separates. And that's not pleasant. Okay, this one wasn't too bad at all. Okay. So, now you can see that white part is the float. Uh, we'll take the float off, we'll look at the needle, we'll test that operation, and um, then I'll show you some other stuff to look at. So, I, I just take all this uh, fuel that's still in the carburetor bowl, and if it's clean, I just put it back in the gas tank, except if there's any chunks in there, then I'll use it as a weed killer. Okay, so here's where some folks that I know, uh, you know, in the past, they get a little nervous. They're like, oh, God, I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, these things are real simple. You know, so you have the float operation here, and, and it should be free. When you take it all apart, the very first thing the float should do is come down. If it stays stuck up like this, that could be a problem. It's probably not letting fuel into the carburetor bowl. Therefore, no fuel is getting into the engine. Uh, but if yours drops like this, that's ostensibly a good sign on the beginning. Uh, if you just want to go for the gold, what you can do is you can man up, put your mouth on this thing and blow into it. When this float is down, you should feel air come through. Push the float up with your finger, you should not be able to blow any more air through. That's an easy way to check for operation of the needle and seat. So this one sounds like, feels like it's working all right. Let's just say that it wasn't. All you'd have to do to replace it or to clean it out is, you see this pin, it just slides out one way or the other, doesn't matter. Should come out fairly easy. If you try to grab it with needle nose or pliers, be careful that you don't uh, gouge it up. So I use a basketball uh, inflation needle for a lot of things, but this is one of them, you can push that that pin out. So if you gouge that up with a pair of pliers and nick it up, uh, then the operation of your float is not going to be smooth and you're going to have more problems. So don't advise doing that unless you're going to replace that pin. So then here, your float just comes straight out and then what fell off, this is the needle, okay, and there you can see, yeah, there you can see the black uh, tip of it. That's like a rubberized element there and it should be a perfect little pyramid just the way that it is. Shouldn't have nicks in it and it I mean it should be there obviously if it's not there that's a problem. But this needle point is what I don't know if you can see yeah you can. Uh, you see that copper ring down in there that's the seat. So this thing goes down into that tube and that is what shuts off and opens up the fuel flow into your carburetor bowl. Okay, so if you looked down in there, on this one you can see, it's, it's open, it's clear, but if you looked down in there and that thing was gobbed up with something, that would be something to, uh, that would be something that needs to be cleaned out. Now in this case, everything looks good so far. Next thing to look at here, I don't know if this is going to show through, but there is Right here, this is part of the jet assembly for the carburetor. This is, the, in, in essence, the pickup. So, you got your carburetor bowl sitting, covering all this, filled with fuel. Fuel is going to get sucked in to this spot right here. Okay? It's going to go up through that white tube, and there's a couple more jets and things. I'm not a carburetor mechanic, okay? But these are simple enough for me to work on. Uh, this white piece here has some other orifices in it. Uh, they've all got to be clean. They've all got to be open. So when you take this apart, I really hope you can see that through that, that copper eye right there, you should be able to see like daylight through it. So for example, on this one, I can see some kind of white, just a pinpoint of white light coming through that center hole in there. If it doesn't, and yours probably won't. Here's how you can maybe 
fix this problem without doing too much more work. It involves Shanghai and your wife's sewing kit, or if it's a lady watching it, uh, your husband's sewing kit, and getting out a sewing needle with the smallest one that you can find. This will go through that hole. There, I think you can see the light coming through there. But this needle is small enough. If that's clogged up in there, use this needle. And it'll, it'll go through there, it'll clean that out. Okay? If that isn't clean, don't go any further. If you can't see a little pinprick of white, whitish light coming through there, there's no point to do anything else yet. Okay, so let's say you've done everything I've told you to do so far. You put it all back together, it still doesn't run. Uh, what it probably is then is the other orifices I was telling you about in this jet assembly up in here, they're clogged. So you got two choices right now. You can either go find a whole nother carburetor. Uh, I've seen them used on eBay, Amazon for like 25 bucks. Not too bad. Uh, or we can take this a step further and you can take this white plastic piece that all this jet assembly will come out and just prize out. Just take a small flathead, get up under here. There's some prying type of ridges in here. And you'll see it will eventually pop up, pop out. Just kind of work your way around like we did that other uh, carburetor bowl because this also has a seal on it, okay? So if it's stuck, that's why you're, you're getting that O-ring broke loose, okay? And of course, the, you can see there's another O-ring on the top of this. So you're going to want to look down in there, look for any obvious cracks or whatever. Uh, but your main problem is probably going to be right here. So on this one, you can see on this jet here, you can cl clearly see that that pinhole of light. That's kind of what I was talking about uh, down on this one, which I think you can see that a little better here. We're clear here. That one's clear. But it looks like we got a little crud here and definitely on this side. So I'm going to just start cleaning them out with some carburetor cleaner and just start poking around there with that sewing needle. You don't have to do this. You can uh, uh, buy a replacement part. They're about 10 bucks. So on this side here, there's all kinds of white corrosion inside this orifice. See that? I don't know if you can see that. There, you can see that a little better on that needle. Uh, that stuff in there will cause that motor not to run. So we gotta clean it all out. So you just pick around in these things gently now. Oh, there's a whole bunch that came out right there. And I have a feeling this motor probably sat outside in the rain. Oh, there's all kinds of corrosion in here. No wonder this didn't run. Uh, people for some reason here in Hawaii, they leave their, their lawnmowers unprotected outside and they get rained on and they don't run. So here's the other reason I have basketball needles around. Uh, I put them in my, my son's bike air pump and you can use this as a gentle way uh, to clean some of this stuff out. Right? So you just pop this in some of these areas and give it a pump. Again, easier with both hands free, uh, but you get the idea. Okay, I just stuck that sewing needle down this centerpiece here and I got a big glob of corrosion out. Uh, so just work it around easy. Don't tear anything up if you don't want to buy a new one of these. Okay, so what I did so far is just use that needle to gently clean around in those. Uh, this side you can clearly see that one's open. We're open here. If I spray starting fluid in, in this hole, it comes out of this one and vice versa. I should have mentioned too, uh, you can buy a set of these little jet brushes on eBay for like two bucks. And these are sometimes easier than shoving a, your wife's sewing needle down here uh, and they do a little better job. But the problem with these is on the lawnmower carburetors, they are not small enough to get in that jet or this one here. So that's why you're going to have to use something smaller and that's why I 
prefer the sewing needle, but for this middle one here, you can use the uh, appropriate size one of these brushes to do the job a little better. In fact, on this middle hole, I even got the smallest one with the brush because some of these are just straight wire. I even got the smallest brush in here. And that really cleared out the white gunk. You should be able to squirt starting fluid or carb cleaning fluid into here and it should come screaming out of here and vice versa. Then you know you've got a clear path inside here. Uh, on this carburetor, don't worry about this. Just clean the junk out of here if you do have any up in there. Okay, and then installation is reverse of removal. Okay, so now that we have all those orifices in there more or less cleaned out, I'm going to throw this back together and uh, see if it'll run. Remember when you're doing this, um, especially maybe the first time you work on this, be prepared to take all this stuff apart two, maybe even three times. Uh, sometimes it just takes a while to get all this stuff cleared out to where your motor will run. Okay, but uh, I'm going to pop all this back in. Everything is exactly the opposite of the way that it came out. And uh, we'll see what, what happens. Okay, you're going to squeeze that till it pops and locks in. The needle has a groove it fits into on the float, just like that. And you're going to put it up into um, this hole right here, where my thumb is. That's where the needle goes. Okay, when that's in, now we're going to slide our uh, hinge pin back, back. Okay, and you can check for proper operation again. Make sure it falls to the bottom and you can do the air check. This one's good. So now we're going to put the float bowl back on. Lined up. Kind of wiggle it on there. It's kind of There'll be some resistance because that's a pretty thick o-ring that goes around that bowl, but it should come pretty tight, almost snap, okay? Then put those two 215 screws back in. And with that, I always advise, uh, you know, put one in, snug it down, then get the other one started. before you go smoking any of these down. Try to keep everything in balance. Okay, once you have your carburetor back together, it's time to put it back onto the motor. Okay, so you're gonna wanna hook this carburetor up pretty well the reverse of how you took it out. And over here, uh, this has like an alignment notch in it, and there's a little hunk of plastic right here on the side of the carburetor, that, uh, right here on the side of the carburetor, that goes inside this notch. Uh, and you can't see it real well in the video, I know, but it's not rocket science to figure that out. And you just push this gently back over that intake pipe on the head. it seats fully. Okay, make sure you got action going here and here. Make sure everything's freed up the way it should be. Again, for an initial fire up check, I'm just going to slide this fuel line over and not mess with the clamp yet. And here's a little better view of the uh, notches where your fuel tank clips, of where your fuel tank... And that's my daughter. Hi, babe. And it slides down just like that. So then we're going to put the adapter uh, back on the front of the carburetor. I do it loosely. Um, go ahead and put your air inlet pipe on. Just slides right on. And then just to test fire, uh, just because they're quicker. 
I'm going to take the T15 screws and just slap them on here. It just keeps all this stuff from wiggling around um, if it does indeed decide to run. And take your uh, take your cover, slide it back into position, and just for test fire purposes, I'm just going to throw these front two bolts on. No sense in putting everything back in. It's not going to run yet. So give this thing a chance at running. I'm going to spray a little bit of starting fluid in here. And we're going to see what happens. That was so nice. Let's do it again. And so that, my friends, is how you fix uh, one of the Briggs & Stratton 550EX series motors. I scared my daughter when I started it up. She, I guess she wasn't expecting that either. Uh, but that's how you fix one of these series motors and basically for free if you have all of the uh, basic hand tools that I described in there. I'm all about fixing these things on the cheap and then passing them off to somebody else for cheap. I make a little money, they don't pay too much, and we keep the crap out of the landfill. Uh, so bottom line here is get a couple sewing needles, uh, spend a dollar or two on a maybe on a jet cleaning brush kit. Uh, if you've got, this is my set of hand tools here I've had for about 17 years. Got those at Walmart. Don't have compressed air, use a tire pump. And then put your, uh, where's my bike now? Put the bike needle on the end of it. Blow stuff out that you don't need a whole lot of PSI on a lawn, lawnmower like this. So I've got it running, but obviously I'm babysitting. So uh, remember, you, you got to put your fuel clamps back on. You got to put the other bolts in your cover, the other two bolts in the air filter <coughs> assembly in here, slide your air cleaner, uh, air filter element back on, put your cover on, and you got to run a mower. So um, worst case scenario, you clean that little white part out, the jets, still doesn't run, buy a new one for 10 bucks off the Briggs & Stratton website. Uh, I will list all the tools, I'll list all the part numbers in the description. If you have any questions, let me know, and thank you for watching my videos. Hit me up with any questions or comments.